So I want to go over some stuff here. Um, World War II. There's a thing called the Nazi Bell, which everybody keeps thinking is a flying saucer and all this other stuff. I don't think it was quite that. Uh, it tells you blah, 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 blah. Uh, they were dealing with focus on genetics, biological research, and the research into what radiation could do to German enemies. The project was also known as Kronos or Saturn. How about that? Let's just move that up here because I've been saying this forever and nobody wants to listen. Which refers to this which refers to spin polarization plasma physics. It means basically one of these rings is spinning this way, the other ring is spinning the other way. It says the plasma torus, which is a which is a Torah. You know how the Jews have the Torah? The Torus and the and the Torah and the and the Toro the bull. The bull. Right? Inside the bell. So in other words, they created a vortex in here. The bell, which is Saturn, right? Bell Saturn, exploited spin polarization of the atoms to create plasma. It would be entirely fitting to apply Kronos to Garlock's scientific role. The final but most well-known code name was Dear Glock, which means the bell in German. The meaning behind the code name or its association is entirely un uh, unclear. No, it's not, because it's right here. It's the bell. It's Bell Saturn. What they've done is they took a bigger thing, Saturn, and made it into a smaller thing a miniature atomic reactor. The word the word Holocaust if we look the word Holocaust means to uh, uh, to this is interesting stuff Holocaust literally an offering is completely burned up that's what a Holocaust is I mean that's the definition of a Holocaust a whole burnt offering. See, this is why they can't find any bodies along with the story in those in those war camps. They find ashes, but they don't find the the oven story don't work because the way that they showed how it was done was completely ludicrous. This, however, makes sense. Um, let's see. The word Holocaust is used three times in the New Testament. Hollow Katoma is used three times for the whole burnt offering, a sacrifice in its entirety. If we look over here, this is interesting, the Catholic Encyclopedia, which nobody ever sees. Notice, notice that it refers to Leviticus 1 as the victims. It doesn't say lamb. It says victims. A victim is somebody that's not willing, that's been taken against the will being assisted on, on occasion by the Levites. The Levites were the priests that did that do, did all the sacred stuff. The inspection of the entrails, blah, 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 blah. Notably, notably, it was not, notably of the Phoenicians, who the Jews speak ancient Phoenician. There is no Hebrew language. Plutarch wrote about it. Interesting that they use a double X here and a 903 code. The Ilad, or this, which were the gods, this, where that's where civil comes from, from the Il Ilias. Notice they use the 33, the lower gods being demonic entities. And then over here it talks about. Um, 1 Samuel 33. So what's the odds that that's going to be in there? Of course it's going to be in there. Um, talks about the Jews, and it says both these extrications were made before Yahweh. And we know who Yahweh is. Right? Who's Yahweh? Well, let's take a look.
Here it is here. This is WJYS Christian TV. Notice it says the way and then they whip it around behind here and we can see that it's Yahweh right there. And we all know who Yahweh is, don't we? It, that dude right there. Okay, so in those Holocaust camps, the reason they called it a Holocaust is because the victims were totally burnt up and not in ovens. They used that fucking Nazi bell. Oh, what's interesting about it? What's interesting about it is it says, if I'm, let me find out what it says again real quick. If we look, it says, it appears, da 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 da, -da the horrible deaths. Um, oh, yeah, here. Commented that a horrible death after exposure to the bell. He said their flesh would liquefy. Remember Raiders of the Lost Ark? Remember what happened to them dudes? Let's find out. So here we see Raiders of the Lost Ark. And when they opened the box, they all melted. Interesting that the Nazi bell says the same thing. So it's pretty freaking clear to me what this whole Saturn bell thing was. How they took and made a miniature Saturn. How they used these people to extrapolate energy and make plasma. And I'm pretty sure that's what they did at Sandy Hook, considering that everything at Sandy Hook was pulverized. Let's just take a look at that real quick. What happened to Sandy Hook? <clears throat> when the old Sandy Hook Elementary School's demolished buildings, materials would be pulverized on site and metal would be taken away and melted down in an effort to eliminate nearly every single trace where the gunmen killed 26 people. The fuck out of here. You don't do that for murders. They didn't do that for the Manson murders. They didn't ever do that. It's because it's radioactive. For fuck's sake. Are you fucking kidding me? There's one last little bit. And I know that the reason that the guy made it the way that he did is because he was telling you in his own way that that's exactly what they were doing with this Nazi bell thing. They were extrapolating energy out of people. Now, I believe this is what the bell is. You see the red and the blue. The, this is this is all atomic. What they're doing here, what I believe they did, is in this word Holocaust, is they extrapolated energy out of out of human beings. And if you listen very closely, I mean this is a very bizarre, creepy thing. Listen, look at the shape. The same thing that's on Saturn. Here's the circle. Here's the blue light. That red and blue, aside from being pillars, is, is atomic energy. It's, um, oh, what is it? I can't remember. It's, it has to do with gravity and gravity and um, density. Now, now listen, I mean, why would they put this in there if it wasn't true? Because this has no correlation with anything I did on the other video. See, there's, there would be no reason for them to put that in there, to put that noise in there, if they weren't inferring that some human being or something wasn't having its energy sucked out of them. That's why I believe that's what they were doing. And that's what the Nazi bell was. God knows what they've done now.
choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept and one we intend to win. Figuring out how to send something into space at a high speed and send that data back to Earth at immense speed, faster than ever before, was an amazing accomplishment. The main problem was that any digital storage device capable of recording huge amounts of data would be way too big physically, uh, the size of several buildings actually. Um, it would require a lot of power, so we needed a way to record huge, really huge masses of data and send that back to Earth using a video transmission and a special pulse frequency wave. After years of research and development, we came up with a solution. What if, and only what if, what if we use the most complex and intelligent processing computer ever invented. And even more, what if this computer is actually the human brain? Science has been always chasing this supercomputer just to imitate the way human brains works. And I say, why to invent something that we already have. Our brain is the most powerful supercomputer in the world. In order to deal with the amount of information required to record visuals of the journey into interstellar space, we look towards a more organic means of information storage. Memories. We used memories as a way to collect the data from a journey not possible for a living, breathing human to survive, and certainly not possible for our existing computers to store on the probe. With the latest synaptic transcoding technology, we were able to map the neural network inside our brain. And the most amazing thing, we were able to translate all this information into visual imaging. We are just converting thoughts or memories into images. It wasn't about creating brand new technologies from the ground up. It was about using all the scientific, medical and engineering research we have acquired over the years. It was about the fusion of advanced medical science combined with space exploration technology. You know, it was the most crazy idea I ever heard in the space agency. You know, it was looking like a science fiction book from my childhood. But those people we're serious about it. This had obviously caused controversy and criticism from leading scientists and scholars worldwide. I mean, on what basis is a brain donor selected for the mission? What we have to bear in mind is that this human conscience would represent humanity if contact was made with other life forms out there. A secure, heat-proofed outer coating, a ball with coolant inside was the means of transport for this journey. There were no boosters or rocket fuel or anything like that. It was designed to merely float like a bubble, recording memories. The project now became something else, something entirely fantastical, with an additional agenda to not only experience interstellar space travel, but to also use a live human brain which is technically alive to record this experience. 
My understanding is that one of the many reasons for using a live human brain was that if Kronos did come into contact with extraterrestrials, then there could be real emotional dialogue exchanged via the pulse signals beamed out of Kronos. Something a computer could never do compared to a live human brain. It's organic and alive. Uh, it would be able to communicate naturally like a living soul, as opposed to electronic pre-recorded messages or AI. What we did is keep those rings spinning around to generate micro electromagnetic charges. So with this pulse, you can regenerate every time the electromagnetic connections inside the brain. Digirays in the Northern Hemisphere picked up a signal pattern which, when you look at it, has the same complexity as DNA strands. It's remarkable uh, that this signal is the encryption of memory data recorded by human brain on its journey through our galaxy to reach us. I was literally shaking when we realized where the signal was from. Uh, I remember the day the first signal came in, it came in as a burst of signal which took a lot of processing time and immense computing power to decode the signal over the year or so from when we receive it. The stream was a, the stream was a mixture between the mission memories and the human past life memories. Essentially, the brain is an organic hard drive, and anything that's transmitted from it are merely memories. Memories are not the most structured or reliable pieces of information to process. The stream was so messy, we ended up leaving a lot of the mess in there. Realizing, essentially, we were viewing the mission experience in a dreamlike form. Dreams are fragments of subconscious memories. We are actually watching Kronos dreaming about the journey it took and what it remembered. What we just witnessed was a memory breach from an unknown origin. It's like someone hacked into the probe's brain and accessed it while leaving something behind. A memory trace of its own. We became involved during the year of processing the transmission data. There were some anomalies in the transmission data that the guys couldn't figure out. But it was the fact that the anomalies resembled some sort of two-way communication is what caught our attention. <laughs> We were able to run sophisticated encryption software to help us figure out what these anomalies were. At first we thought these strange glitches were just radiation interference, but we soon realised this had a pattern. What 
What if the incoming transmission was more than a message or a response to us? What if it was some sort of distress beacon that our Kronos probe happened to come across on its journey? What we discovered was far more overwhelming than we could ever imagine. This was way bigger than we anticipated. These are not random numbers. These are a set of coordinates. And these coordinates related to a, a star map. Our advanced radio telescopes managed to pinpoint the coordinates showing high levels of cosmic energy. Now, we, we strongly believe that these coordinates to be some sort of tunnel or, or energy field for us to pass through, allowing us to travel to their world, possibly by distorting time and space. Was this historical? I would argue that this message, this finding, this discovery, is the most historic event ever achieved by mankind, forever changing our course. This is first contact experienced by a human conscience. Could that memory reflection be a glimpse of what our intelligent alien contact looks like? Perhaps they exist not as the physical entities we are all used to seeing, but perhaps they exist in a form of energy. Perhaps they were also on a journey similar to ours, like travelers crossing each other's paths. Or was it an invitation for us to travel further to meet them? Whatever it is, this is a significant event for the history of the Space Agency. This leads to our next important question of all. How do we proceed? The Space Agency's next step was to initiate a manned mission to the coordinates. This was made possible by the Defense Department's classified Human 2.0 project. Human 2.0 is the next evolution of mankind created by our own technological achievements. It is the Human 2.0 generation of astronauts who will embark on the interstellar mission to meet whatever is waiting on the other side of those coordinates. I, I want to do a follow-up on my last video. Man, am I losing my hair or what? Don't you hate getting old? Ugh, it's the worst. Um, you have to understand something about how the system works. It's a self-revealing system, this, this system that we live in. Uh, it's, it's constantly showing you. It's constantly showing you whether that was the way it was designed or not. It's constantly trying to show you what it's doing. Uh, some might call it coincidence. Some might say, well, this is being done on purpose. They planned it. But it's a self-revealing system. But the fact of the matter is, is you know, in the, in, in the simplest terms, and believe me, when they finally drop all of this on top of you, they're, go they're going to tell you 
you know, when people scream out, well, we didn't know, we didn't know, how could you have tricked us, how could you lie to us for the religions, they're going to tell you, you know, for the last 50 or 60 years at least through, the, through electronics and through everything else, we tried to show you, we showed you in movies, we, we showed you in songs, we showed you in things that were subversive, and we showed you in things that were not so subversive, but you didn't pay attention. See, you didn't pay attention. All of the movies, all of the songs, they all have meanings, but you never stopped to think. What are these meanings? What are they talking about? You never investigated. And see, they know that, and so it just perpetuates. It's a perpetual emotion that they know that people don't care. And you know what? It goes to the point and the fact that people don't care, even to the point that even if they know they're being lied to, as long as they're getting their paycheck, they're happy with that. See, and they learned this a long, long, long time ago. And see, and so when the day does come, uh, the, I don't mean the day of reckoning standing before the Lord. I'm talking about their day of reckoning when they're going to drop drop all the crap on you and open it up and say, here, ta-da, here's your reward. Uh, they're going to tell you, we tried to tell you. We were fair because you know what? That, that organization, that side of whatever you want to call it, still has rules it has to play by. And it has to give you the opportunity to see what it's doing. See, this is why you always see in the movies the devil has to sign a contract because even the bad guys have rules. And you know, there's no excuse for you just to have said, well, I didn't know. Nobody told me. They, they have been telling you, and I'm not a spokesman for them. I'm just telling you that you are your biggest enemy. You closed your eyes. They tried to tell you. They've been trying to tell you. They're telling you now through all the videos you're watching mine and others, that they are out to fucking kill you. Don't you get it? When will you learn? They are out to kill you. They've been doing it for years. And they're telling you they're doing it. They're telling you in song, in movies. But no, we got to go. We got to watch Star Wars. We got to do Harry Potter. Don't go to that next Harry Potter movie because you're going to see that shit for real, real soon. Excuse my language, but I, you know, I'm so tired of people walking around blind. I'm no smarter than you are. I'm probably dumber. But at least I understand what they're trying to tell me. That, hey, we're running the show here. I understand that Jesus said, I am not the ruler of this world. That Satan is. But you don't see it. See, you don't see it because you don't want to see it. Okay? Wake up. Look at the signs around you. And I don't mean the big ones. Look for the small ones. Because the small ones are the ones that are the, are the most telling. You don't get it, do you? You haven't woken up. And by the time that you do, and you still have time, it might not be too late. And you know what? They won't be held accountable in front of God because the, the ones that are doing this to you will not be held accountable because you were given a fair opportunity, which is your entire life. Babies and that stuff, that's totally separate. But you, adults and young adults and old adults, you've had your entire life to look around and see where the signs are. And you have chosen. You have chosen to accept evil. You have chosen to accept stupidity. You have chosen to accept, it's not my problem, I don't care. And now that is going to be the reward that will be heaped on you when they finally close the door. Because you will be stupid, they won't care, and it's not their problem. Start looking at the signs. And I don't mean the shit on the news, and I don't mean the crap that you hear in Scuttlebutt. Do some research. It's right in front of your face. Stop screwing around. It's right there. It's been there the whole time, your whole life. Gee, music is one of the strongest forces. How many times have you sang songs that you don't even know what the fuck it means? But you still sing it. You know, you go to church and you pray to a God with a certain name and you don't even know who he is. You know, you defend a country called Israel and you don't even know who Israel is. Not that they're the problem, but I'm just saying, you have had your whole life. You know, and this is me too. I'm not exempt from this. I didn't start out as some guy that knew it all. You know, I started out as some young kid. I was 12 years old. I remember Jesus saying something and it caught my interest and you know um, 
but I went from there. But the bottom line is I started out as a Lutheran. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it wasn't until after 9-11 or slightly before that where I really got involved, but I started to notice things. And, 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 and things went on and on and on. They are giving you the opportunity. Remember Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? You remember Slugsworth? You remember he was the he was the bad guy? Okay? He's the one that came along and said, Hey, here, don't give that ever stopping or everlasting gobstopper back to Willy Wonka. Screw him, give it to me and I'll pay you. It's kind of the same thing. Except they are they are in your face, they are showing you what their intention is. But for some reason people don't care. You know, when you're young you think you're gonna live forever. You know, I've always said and when you're in your 20s, you think you're invincible and you're going to live forever. When you get into your 30s, you still think you're invincible, but you don't think you'll live forever. When you get into your 40s, you know you're not going to live forever and you know you're not invincible. And when you get into your 50s, you know you're not going to live forever and you just forget it. I don't even want to get involved. You know what I mean? Um, they're telling you. They're telling you to look around. They're telling you on the smallest infinitesimal level to look around and see who's pulling the strings jesus said it in one sentence i am not the ruler of this world that only leaves one other guy but you just say well whatever it doesn't matter to me who's pulling the strings but it will because not only are you going to be judged individually mankind is being judged right now that's why those things are able to come upon the people because we let them in here we me and you no matter whether you call yourself a Christian or whatever, you've done it and I've done it. We invited those things in. There was a point in history, long, long time ago, when we that this could have been stopped. I don't throw that out upon your head, but th this is a perpetual energy that's been forced and it's going right through, and guess what? There's no stopping it. Wake up, look up, and start talking to the Father and start talking to Jesus because you know what? That's your only way out of here. It's our only way out here. Mine, yours, and everybody else. Okay? Start looking around. The signs are bigger than ever. If you can't read them now, then you truly are lost. 